I want to tell you a scary story. Long time ago, when I was a student of Latvian State University, uh, I was a member of an uh, ethnographic expedition, the goal of which was to uh, collect folklore um, in the area of Latvia, uh, that Republic of Soviet Union where I was living, um, uh, uh, on the border of uh, Latvia and uh, Belarus, uh, kind of a godforsaken place uh, that the Soviet uh, government uh, uh, paid very little attention to and uh, uh, the people that populated that uh, area among the deep forests and swamps and big lakes uh, were kind of left to their own devices and uh, lots of population there uh, was quite religious and there was a, uh, this diversity of r religions that you would encounter in that area. Uh, there were Catholics and uh, Russian Orthodox and Russian uh, Orthodox Old Believers and Baptists, uh, all living uh, in a relative accord uh, with each other, um, protected from the uh, all seen eye of the party and government by the uh, remoteness of that of that area and uh, the goal of our expedition was to collect uh, fairy tales and uh, folk songs and uh, proverbs and anecdotes uh, f folklore um, for uh, to be analyzed by uh, our uh, university uh, students uh, later um, and we came to the village, uh, it was a group of us, about probably 20 or so girls and uh, seven boys that uh, uh, we had in the group, including myself. Uh, and the uh, uh, local population, uh, as it turned out, lived in a relative uh, uh, peace in regards to each other, but to us uh, uh, urban dwellers, they were not very friendly, especially to us boys. And we are arrived there in that village, uh, in our city uh, university student attires, looking like hippies with long hair, John Lennon glasses, bell-bottom uh, jeans, uh, uh, platform shoes, um, and immediately started uh, uh, listening to rock and roll music in our dorm, which was located in a uh, uh, classroom of the old school uh, in which we were put uh, for lodging. And uh, local youth uh, didn't like us. Uh, any attempts to have a contact with local, local youth uh, ended up in uh, uh, them trying to, quite actively trying to beat us up. Uh, one night that we went to the local club uh, for a dance ended up with uh, uh, one of our, my friends losing a tooth uh, and uh, all of us quite scared and uh, almost uh, uh, beaten up. Uh, so eventually we kind of sequestered ourselves in uh, our uh, dorm and uh, only went outside uh, during the daytime uh, to collect folklore, but uh, since the local population was not very friendly, we uh, eventually abandoned any attempts of uh, collecting folklore and just invented it. I just invented the folk songs and the fairy tales and just re recorded our uh, concoctions uh, and later on I imagined that there are uh, students uh, going through our papers and like wow this is all very strange and different everyone else's folklore is about the same and this is like strange but I don't know what happened to our concoctions uh, and that's not the focus of, of, of the story. The, the, the thing was that uh, uh, since we were sequestered in, in our uh, school, in our uh, dorm, we couldn't really go outside much uh, and we were quite hungry lots of the time. We would go to a local store and buy some uh, wine and vodka 
so we were uh, well conditioned by alcohol, but in terms of food, we didn't really have, have much. Uh, and of course, there was an idea in our mind that uh, at night we maybe could bre break into the uh, expedition's kitchen and uh, perhaps steal some food from the pantry, but we were good boys and we didn't want to do that. And we started like thinking like, where can we forage? And what can we forage for? And uh, walking through the village, uh, daytime mostly, we noticed that there is a like abundant garden plot uh, next to the lake, uh, beneath the hill on which there uh, stood uh, an old Polish Catholic church uh, and a little cemetery above it. And uh, we noticed that the fence of that plot was kind of broken and uh, it was overgrown with weeds. Um, but we also noticed that they were growing some potatoes and onions there. So we would, uh, uh, in the evening, in the dusk, we would uh, sneak out uh, into this uh, uh, garden plot, uh, dig out some potatoes and some onions, and then come back to our school, uh, sneak into the kitchen, and uh, uh, cook our potatoes and our onions, and uh, sometimes maybe steal uh, uh, a little ham from the pantry just to jazz up uh, our con con our concoction, um, our uh, food uh, creation. Uh, the potatoes would come out very tasty. They were great potatoes. We would cook them uh, in, in 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 oil and butter, and they were just coming out beautifully. But it took a long time to uh, to cook them. And in that village, uh, we only had one friend. Uh, the village constable, Vanya. Uh, Vanya was a, uh, a young fellow, probably 22, 24, and he just returned from uh, the uh, tour of duty in uh, Soviet Special Forces. I mean, the guy was built like a refrigerator. He was a short fellow, all muscles, uh, very strong and kind of mean looking. And he was a local policeman, lo local constable. Uh, and for some reason, uh, we don't know why, he took liking of us. And uh, that gave a certain degree of protection, though Vanya himself was not very pleasant and always wanted our vodka in the evening when his uh, duty was over, he would show up. Uh, uh, he wanted our company, he wanted to listen to our music, but uh, he was somehow not very friendly and slightly aggressive too, but uh, uh, he had certain things that was receiving certain things from us that he was benefiting from. Uh, he liked our company and we didn't really care much for his company, but well, it's better Vanya than uh, local boys throwing rocks into our windows. Well, that night uh, we were sitting in the kitchen and uh, cooking our potatoes and it was around probably three in the morning. Uh, we were already having like a second hangover from all the vodka and wine that we consumed and Vanya was drinking with us. Uh, so we were kind of groggy, just sitting in the kitchen waiting for potatoes to get ready on a stove, a wooden stove. Uh, it was a hot night, uh, the uh, door into the kitchen was from the open onto the, uh, onto the uh, deck. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it was quiet. Vanya was sitting on a chair uh, to the uh, right of the stove, also kind of dozing off, also kind of groggy. And then suddenly we hear like a shuffle, some kind of sound on the deck, and uh, we look at each other and we listen and we distinctly hear maybe footsteps uh, and the creaking of the uh, planks of the deck and we just look at each other and that's never a good news uh, in that corner of the world if something is walking on your deck uninvited so we become a little bit alarmed uh, and I look at Vanya the village constable and he is all pale. He is holding his chair with his hands, like his eyes are bl bulging out of his skull. He looks all absolutely terrified, all petrified by terror. 
Well, that does not uh, encourage us. I tell my friend Valery in German, so that uh, whoever is outside would not understand uh, us. Take the ox and hide it. I grab a knife uh, from from the uh, table and uh, someone else grabs a fork or something and we just sit there and Valery walks over to the uh, door, he sticks his head out and then he walks out and we hear voices and uh, uh, then he comes back and he's accompanied by two village boys. Apparently they were walking by uh, our uh, dorm and they saw the light uh, in our windows and decided to say hello for some unknown reason. So they walk in, they see the constable and uh, they immediately feel uncomfortable in his presence and uh, so they, we exchange some uh, pleasantries, some uh, small talk and the boys leave and they walk away. Uh, by then the potatoes are ready and we are about to sit down to eat them and we kind of are relieved that this is, was that this was all that was happening, there was no real danger for us. We turn to Vanya and ask him, Vanya, what the hell happened to you? You looked like all petrified and like full of terror, like why? And he looks at us, looks at us again and he says, but I know where you get your potatoes. We go, yeah? You get your potatoes uh, at that abundant plot by the church? Yeah? By the cemetery, right? We're just beneath the cemetery. Yeah? And then he looks at us like we don't get it. Like we are idiots or something. He looks at us and says, sometimes, sometimes they come back. And then it downs some well, according to the local beliefs, we were probably disturbing the dead in that cemetery. Unforgivable thing. And since then, I tried to have as little contact with dead things as possible, because I heard it from someone from the region where this really happens that sometimes they come back.